Wow. Wow. I think we got sound. How did that go? Um, I, I, you know, I have tried to show videos before on the live stream and it's just been an abject failure. And so I really want to try that. Oh man, hold on, hold on. I'm going to stop there. There we go. Sorry about that. Welcome and hello and happy Friday and holy cow, what a week. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I've got a, quite a few things uh, to show today. Um, I am going to show you this. Uh, that is what we're going to talk about. I'm doing the space station repair dealy wobber, and I'm pretty excited about it. And then here it is. This is it on, you know, behind me. Um, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I, I think it'll be fun to talk about this stuff. And I want to talk about what this thing is. You know, this is, this is it. Um, it is a, uh, a presentation model and I didn't build it. I didn't build it. It is, it, it came to me in boxes. It came to me in six boxes, a pen that it came to me in five boxes, but one or six boxes, but one held boxes. So yes, it, it was just crazy. But anyway, it had all been kind of, I don't know if it had been dropped on or something like that, but everything was in pieces. And so what I had to do is I had to repair it. I had to, I had to take this and put it back together. And I did that. Again, I didn't build it. This was built for Frank L. Uh, Culbertson. He's uh, a captain, a retired captain in the U.S. Navy and an astronaut. And um, this is going to be in the Museum of Flight in Seattle. It's going to be in an exhibit this summer. And so I'm honored to be asked. Uh, it was a volunteer thing. Honored to be asked to, you know, repair it and, and get it ready for... Um, you know, ready for display at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. So yeah, wow, it's really fun. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about um, my figures because I'm, I'm still working on those things. I know I haven't been doing daily posts and stuff, but we're going to talk about that too. And um, right after this is done, it is full on time to like dive in and 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 work on uh, Emma Carlos and Ichiro my diorama that I built last year, uh, Machine and Krieger, and uh, Willow One Trench for the IPMS Spring Show, which is coming up next month, uh, the end of next month. So just about a month, I have prep time to get these two dioramas, number one, finished, you know, Willow One Trench isn't finished, and uh, to get Emma Carlson Ichiro to a point where I can take it to a show. I never kind of Mm, got there, you know? So there's some neat things to talk about. I hope you think it's fun. Uh, so I want to say hello. Gosh, some people have been waiting and I, I got some wonderful hellos and comments and I, I just want to, you know, say hello uh, to everybody. Um, uh, first person in today, Martin, thank you very much. Fancy intro, Bill. Cheers from Holland. Thank you very much, Martin, for coming in. Yeah. I, so again, that whole intro thing was was an attempt to to get a better intro out of this. There are some videos that I took of what this thing looked like when I first got it. Uh, and I, I didn't take any stills. I don't know why. I did take stills of the build and I'll show you those today. But I got this video that shows it came in these boxes and, and, and it was just kind of pieces. And so it would be kind of fun to, to you know look at that. So um, I wanted to show and see and test if videos would work. And I think they worked great. I it seemed like they were playing properly. I don't know about skipping or anything like that, but thank you very much, Martin. Um, Go for it painting is here. Hello. Thanks very much for coming on. Go for it painting. And I'm sorry it took so long. I just, sometimes I get excited and, and it, it's like things come out. I just start talking and I don't stop. Scott is here. Hello, Scott. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, howdy, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe. This is an awesome channel. Take it away, Bill. Thank you so much, Scott. You're so cool, sir. Um, Scott, I, I mean, we we talk almost every day, uh, text and stuff like that with comments and stuff like that. And and it's really fun. You know, I have another person that, that I do that with, uh, Angela. Angela does that uh, too. And, and it's really fun, folks. I really, really do appreciate it. Mark is here. Hello, Mark. Thanks very much for coming in. I really appreciate you coming on. You know, Mark, we need to talk about what you're going to do. Are you going to be at, at the, the spring show? Um, because I know there was a few things you were talking about. So I'd really like to kind of get back into that and see. Scott McLeod, fantastic intro, Bill. Pleasant surprise. Thanks. And I, 
you know, I think I want to try and do that because I'm back to editing. You know, that's a big, big change. And that's one of the things that's so different about my postings lately is that I'm full on editing and editing is a, it's a bear. It's a son of a gun. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, John, hello and hello everyone. Thanks very much for coming on, John. It's great to see you. Um, so let's kind of dive into this thing and I want to show you my slides and I want to talk to you about stuff, but, um, it's basically, I want to show you kind of where this thing is and what's left because again, what's next, I'm super excited about too. Uh, and I only have a month. Um, Mark says, I hope to get to spring show bench has been closed for the duration. Of course, uh, get new digs, middle of April. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, even something one forty fourth, you know, would be great, Mark. Um, and, and I know you were working on something just kind of as catch as catch can, um, you know, in, in places and stuff like that, but boy, I do hope you get to something there and being there is just awesome too. So, um, I, Okay, this is kind of weird. I signed up to judge this year. I've never judged anything. I've been to a few shows. I've only been to one competition show. And when you sign up for a judge uh, at, at an IPMS event, you are put together with people that are experienced, the senior uh, judge for you get in a group, and then you someone who's intermediate, and then a newbie like me. And so I'm going to mostly be learning the ropes, understanding judging protocol and things like that. Now, no secrets that I've been kind of a, it's not against competition. It's that I personally have never wanted to compete still today. It's not. And then, you know, this last year was the first time I competed at that event because I wanted to go to the event. It's really super fun. And I was working at it because I'm a member of IPMS and AMPS and, you know, Galaxy Exiles and stuff like that. So, so multiple clubs. But the point is, I really enjoy it. And last year when they held the event, I, I had to enter. And I knew ahead of time because they didn't have a display only table. And I had a lot of reservations. And I've talked an awful lot about competition because I don't want to build to win. I don't want to build specifics because of winning you know it kind of when you when you build something i think directed at a test or you know what i'm saying you you kind of are building to win it and so you it might alter your free thought of where i want this diorama or where i want this project to go that's kind of my own thoughts okay I, I, and i'm not imposing them on anyone anybody that wants to compete it's great i go to competitions and i think it's wonderful but because I won last year, there was a lot of really, really neat responses. And this is a channel. I'm trying to grow my channel. And I, and I think, you know, Ms. Mullicraft said, look, I think you owe it to folks that you talk to about it to go to the competition and compete. And whatever happens, you tell them how you feel about it. And I thought, boy, that was a really, really, obviously, Mrs. Mullicraft smarter than me. It was a very insightful thing. You know, it's not just for me. And, and I liked it. I thought that was a really good thing. It's not like I wasn't going to go. I, I, I had decided I was going to go, but I just, I was uneasy about it. But I, I think that's a wonderful perspective. But also I did enjoy winning last year. I honestly did. It was a very big surprise, but I, I, I thought it was wonderful. I enjoyed it very much. So I am going to go. And uh, I am going to judge and I am going to get two dioramas that I built last year. Um, well, I'm, you know, I'm still doing World War One, and I'm going to enter both of those. So that's the skinny on that. And so we'll talk about that. And, and, and boy, if I haven't already, you know, slayed the dragon already. But yeah, let's we'll talk about that later. Um, I have a couple of more comments. Uh, Mark says, judge last year. Dad, I'll do it this year. Yeah, I, and then, and that's really the thing, Mark. I want to, number one, I want to take huge notes. I know that a lot of folks sometimes had questions after judging. And then say they would, they would seek out the judge afterwards and say, you know, why didn't I win? Well, I think that's going to be one of my major 
focuses because I would be that person if I'm in there to compete and I and I really wanted to know why I didn't win. I mean, I I kind of think it's obvious if yours is not taken, somebody else is better. But I mean, whatever the case may be, if somebody wants to ask me, I want to make sure I document why this or that person won over because I do want to give them feedback. I don't want to give them. I want to. I don't want to try to be as subjective. I'm that kind of person. I really get into stuff personally, right? But I want to try to be objective. I want to completely give them, you know, reasonable, actionable things so that they can prepare if that's their goal to win the following time. And I think that's some of the things that I've read online that a lot of people have some uh, questions about. Why isn't there a feedback methodology, you know, just, just, just baked into it? Well, being to a few of these shows now, I understand why. Number one, as soon as the, the awards come out at some of these competition shows, people grab their stuff and they skedaddle. So it's almost like a bum's rush, <laughs> you know? And that's one of the reasons I'm not a whole big fan of the competition thing, because if you should get to a show, you know, your local show, you just want to go and see and stuff like that. If you get there after the judging, chances are you may not be able to see things because people do that. You know, they just, they just grab their stuff and go. And during that time, if you're trying to have a constructive criticism with someone, and again, I, I, I don't like the criticism part of it. I just, you know, this all goes back to this kind of philosophy deal of a, 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 a somebody creating something. If I don't like a movie like Star Wars, that's a big, you know, a lot of people have triggers on Star Wars. I love Star Wars, all of them. There's some I like more than others. There's some I flat out don't like. Fact is just not my thing. But I love the original Star Wars, right? Well, the fact that I like it or not is immaterial because I'm viewing somebody else's work. And I really want to respect the fact that they put everything that they had into it. My liking or not doesn't mean that I can say you should have done this or you shouldn't have done that. See my point? That's not my job. My job is to view it and give you my impressions of what I thought of it. Okay? I, I don't think that's unreasonable. If somebody wants to hear it, I, I'm not going to just say it. It's just if somebody asks me. And so in this judging process, I think that I would like to try and, and take as many notes, number one, for myself to understand the judging process, but also to give feedback to anybody that should approach me just so that I can satisfy that because that would be something that I would want to hear. What did I do wrong? How can I improve? Because I am a person that loves continuous improvement. I, I, I never think that I've, you know, that's done. We'll just cross that off the list and I'm a pro. I, I'm just not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person that kind of looks at it continuously and says, well, look, there's, there's probably a different level that I can still reach with this, even though I've reached the top of my limits now of my capabilities and, you know, whatever I'm trying to do. And so I think that's a really nice, valuable thing that you can do at a show is to give that feedback from the judges if somebody's, you know, interested. So, okay, enough of that. So let's talk about Mir. Um, a while back, a friend of mine, uh, Tim, and he he's a docent at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, um, emailed me, emailed, emailed a bunch of people. And I said, yeah, hey, I, you know, I raised my hand. And said, yeah, I'd like to, to try and do this. And, and what it was is they had some exhibits that came from some here at the Seattle uh, Museum of Flight, but some from another museum where they had been on display or been in archive, whatever the case may be, and they'd been shipped. Mine was in that, that grouping. And so this was shipped from Texas, I believe, Houston. I, I'm, I'm not 100% on that, but I know it was in Texas. And it was shipped up here and it came in boxes and, and, and it was just destroyed. So I'm going to try and do this thing. I'm not going to do the, 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 um, I'm not going to do the, the audio from the video, but I'm going to show the video and I'm going to talk. I'm going to see how this works. I'm going to try this view here. And, and, it's, and, and it's actually turn off the sound. And I'm, I'm trying to show you here how this came to me. Is that a little bit better? So this came to be, and this is one of the boxes. This is the mere uh, main core of the space station. Back here, you can see where it's been put back together. That's the, the long 
uh, lateral part in the middle there that I'm holding. You see, it's only got one solar panel. So that one solar panel, um, you know, I'd be really careful with that, but it's also got this big girder. And I know what that is because I found a lot of really fun. I'm going to change the view on this because it's kind of like cutting in my head or maybe I'm just being stupid. So anyway, this is better. Um, and so these are the individual parts. Now, beyond that, um, there were other parts and I'm going to kind of fast forward so you don't have to look at that the whole time. Um, there were other parts in this that were in just little separate boxes. And so I had to just basically put it back together. Well, one of the issues with it, um, and I'm going to go to my other camera so I can show you that, is that once I got everything put back together here, these are the uprights. And look at this. I'm, I'm doing this very carefully. I know, you know, what it'll do already. I was really careful in, in, in putting this back together, but it's really loose. So that's one of the things. So the reason I wanted to show you that was I just wanted to make a point that my job isn't really to change anything in this repair. This is somebody else's artwork. This is somebody else's um, build. And my job is to just basically put it back together. If there's some chipped paint here or there where the break is, breaks occurred, I put a little a little tiny bit of paint. If there was, you know, some kind of, um, there's a lot of little tiny antennas, little, little things that come out from it all over the place. And some of those had been bent in, in the way it was laying and stuff like that. And so I, I straightened those out and did a little paint there. But there's like no repaint. There's no recreating parts or anything like that. It's missing one solar panel. That's it. Everything else is great. And so I just put everything back together. The shakiness thing is I'm waiting for the museum to get back to me on a request of, look, should I, I mean, should I secure these things into the base? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Right now, everything can still come off of those mounts that I have. And I'm going to, i got to re-kick this camera. It, it only stays on for like 20 minutes. And so, sorry about that, folks. Um, so it only stays on for 20 minutes. So I have to just restart it. But I just want to go back to it. Because um, on here, if, if I'm able to secure these, then I can secure other parts. Because right now, all of this still comes off. This, this mass will still slide off of these mounts. And, you know, I could, I could, you know, take it back to the museum and they could put it on display. But um, the, the, the problem with that is it's so rickety um, and I'd, I'd, I'd have a problem transporting it because I have to build a whole other aperture, I don't know what, to haul this thing back because with all those, those panels put back in place, it's so ungangly. There's no way to transport it except kind of on the base as it is. But I can't do that with the, the, the loose little mounting lugs. So that's what I was trying to get at. So anyway, that's was one of the things that, um, you know, is a little bit, uh, uh, I don't know, difficult about this. But, you know, it's still, it's, it's just part of the job. So anyway, um, I'm probably getting distracted. So what I'd like to do is show you some pictures of putting it together, just so you will know what it looked like and stuff like that. And then I wanted, I would like to talk about um, Captain Retired. There goes that little stupid deal. Um, retired Captain Frank Culbertson, who is an astronaut, and 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 you know I I got his little bio here, okay, and I printed it out just to go ahead and read some facts. And this is the one from NASA, and oh my goodness reading something like that it's just a laundry list of like oh man that should be like a movie or that should be a book or that should, you know what i mean it's just like this guy's entire life and it's neat you know because because people like that high achievers and stuff like that it's really neat to to read about that a lot of times so anyway i i just thought that was good um i've got a couple of uh uh comments here and that's what i was looking uh, for before. So, uh, judging, judging wasn't painful, but between volunteering at registration and judging, I was at the show for five hours and spent 45 minutes looking at models and vendors. Yeah, I totally get it, Mark. You don't really get a chance to do that when you're so involved. I did the same thing. I was there for the auction 
uh, I was working the option and registration. And those two are, they're, they're kind of nonstop, you know, they don't, they don't stop. And, and yeah, it was kind of the same thing. I only took a little bit to, to look around shopping. Shopping is great at these shows and, and I could have done a little bit more of that. So anyway, yeah, same kind of deal, but, uh, it's still, it's a wonderful show and, and, and it's fun to go to. Link is here. Nice to see you, Bill. Look forward to Friday at three. Have a great weekend. You as well, Link. That's really, really cool. Link is on the East Coast. And um, Link, I hear from Link a lot too. He's one of those folks that uh, I hear, uh, you know, back and forth um, uh, from, you know, throughout the week, which is really, really super fun. Uh, okay. So I keep on stalling this thing out. I'm very, very sorry about that. These are some slides. We know what these slides are. So I'm going to go past a few, uh, you know, about that. Now, here is the repairing the mirror. So this is, you know, like I said, you saw the little video there of, of how it came in. I just started in on this thing really careful because there was also no instructions, something like that, though I had some nice um, little guides, you know, printouts and stuff from, from online uh, because this thing was up in, you know, up in low orbit for 15 years. Um, and so I just kind of worked my way through putting it back together. Um, those little girder beams coming out, those were munched. And I had to bring him back. I think I got him okay. Um, it, that one is supposed to be at an angle. One is supposed to be straight. And uh, I believe it's a radio antenna or something like that. Um, here's putting in some... I actually used a bamboo skewer. I wanted lightweight. Uh, I had the brass. I didn't have the exact uh, diameter of brass that I wanted. But I did have bamboo. And um, that's going to work great. So I used that and then finally trimmed it down. Now... I said this is, you know, it's a presentation model for Mr. Frank or astronaut Frank Culbertson. Um, and what he did was he was the head of the phase one project to get the Atlantis, which is the model here. You see the Atlantis to dock with Mir. And so in that they had to build a module um, and it's that red part and then the white part below it going into the shuttle's, uh, bay. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's a guess. I've read a lot about it. Um, but it's, it's really neat. So one of this person's many, many accomplishments is, um, being an astronaut, being an engineer, heading up this program. That's what this was about. Um, he was also the only person, um, the only person from the United States uh, in space during 9-11. And there's a pretty eerie video that he took from Mir um, during 9-11, because from Mir, they can clearly see with just a regular camera and a zoom, they clearly see the smoke and stuff like that from 9-11. So it was really, really weird. And he, and he did a lot of, uh, you know, um, commemorating and, and things like that. The two um, uh, Russian cosmonauts that were on board Mir at the same time with him also were were so consoling and, uh, you know, it was a different time. And, 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 and we still have those wonderful relationships with the space, you know, with uh, Russia. And so um, that was pretty neat. And, and, and so reading about this gentleman, reading about his involvement in some of the, the, the things that, you know, we grew up with, you know, this was from 86 to 2001 was when Mir was in low orbit. And it's the first substantial thing ever put in space, you know, uh, was the largest at the time, the precursor to the ISS. Um, it took 10 years just to put it up in space. So they started in 86 and it took through 96 to get every component that they had, you know, planned on for Mir um, to be in space. And, and, and Mir in, in Russia, you know, this is just part of the, the information that you read on. It means peace or world. And I don't know if it means world peace, but I think it, it might be kind of the, the same thing. So I don't know. That's what I read. But I really liked it. And, and, and growing up, that was a big deal. You know, uh, you know that, was, that was fun 30 years ago when when we had that relationship and all of that stuff and the end of the cold war and and you know really uh very sentimental time so anyway i really enjoyed working on it 
after I get the okay as to where I got to do, you know, to finalize this thing, then I'm done with that. Let me get it out of here, get it back to the museum. And then it's start time to start planning and prepping that month long that I'll have for the show. So let's look at some of that stuff. Um, I need to go here and get to some pictures. Oh, first I want to show you my final eight figures. So let's do that. I'm I'm really skipping around, folks, and I'm sorry about that. Um, so I I have been working on these. These guys I kind of set aside because I wanted to, you know, Oscar passed, and and then I had this mirror project, and it's just kind of wacky. So I have been working on this, but I haven't really been posting uh, the daily stuff, the daily shorts about the work I'm doing on these guys. Mostly, it's uniforms at this point. Um, the last thing I think I'll do are the hands. I saw a wonderful person online this last couple of weeks and oh my goodness, how he did the hands, um, on these guys. And, and this is fun. This is the guy that's reporting to the, the medic station. So remember in the diorama, I put a medic station at one end of the trench. And, the, and that's part of the portal and all that kind of stuff in the trench. Well, as they're walking through, this guy's going to split off. And then he's going to be reporting to an officer that's kind of taking notes on a notepad. So I like that part of the element. So he got injured on their mission. I still got to do a bunch of mud. But I, I like how the story element with these figures is coming along. So let's look at these guys some more. So he's got an injury to his leg. So he's reporting uh, to the guys. Uh, and he's also going to have blood on his hands from just kind of repairing the, the you know, the injury. Um, this is one of the guys that is going to be kind of out front. And it's not like I'm doing more for him, but I am kind of leading the way on what I'm painting on how I paint him. Because he's going to be the, the, the guy right out front. So everything I do on him, I'm trying to transfer to the other guys to make sure that they look proper. And, uh, you know, it looks like a unit. Um, the bags were a big part of painting this here last uh, week, um, trying to get the bags, satchels, all the, uh, the extraneous stuff, the shoes. So the shoes, I thought, were brown. No, I guess they were black. A um, uh, real nice person um, online, you know, came in and commented and said, you know, in Australia, those, those boots were brown. But in different uniforms, like most of the British soldiers, they were black. The officers were brown. So I changed those. And I like them. I think they look good. They still got to be muddied up because these guys are coming back from a mission. So that's still part of the process. But I wanted to get the, the, the painting, uh, you know, done on them first. This guy's bag is terrible. I got to redo his bag completely. Okay, so show prep. This is the spring show. Um, and it's going to be April 27th, as you can see there. Now, this is a one-day show. This is the other thing that I'm a little bit weirded on, uh, on this show thing, right? So, well, that's not what I wanted to do. I was going to try to show that, and I guess I can't. Darn it. But um, the one-day show. The other favorite show that I go to is in February. It's a display-only show. It's two days. Brilliant, you know? So that's the other thing I like about it. But, okay, so this is a competition show. People come in from all over to this. It's a good darn size show. i got to tell you that. Um, people show up from Canada, uh, the uh, California, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, BC, I, just quite far and come to the show. It's a really neat show because there are so many really wonderful um, uh, builders in the Pacific Northwest. So they come to the show, and it's great. Um, it is at the Renton Community Center, and uh, it's a really nice venue. Um, so this is Carlos, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Emma Carlos Nichiro. And this was the diorama that I did before World War I Trench. And so I need to go back and do some work on, uh, this is Carlos, on Emma Carlos Nichiro, and kind of get them, you know, all dolled up again. That's why I had the the video of them starting there's Ichiro I love Ichiro and um one of the things that I'll be doing in getting this ready is placards um John Robeck uh did such a wonderful job 
on the placards. I just need to put the text and the story. And, and I thought, remember, John, this one, this is the image that we used for um, the ballad of uh, Carlos and Ichiro, which is going to be the name of the placard on the side. So really, really cool stuff. Hey, Neil is here. Hello, Neil. Uh, hi, Bill. Hi, all. Hello, Neil. Thanks very much for coming in. Um, so this is, you know, this, I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to finish up Emma Carlos and Ichiro. Um, and then get him ready to display. And then, of course, we'll roll on trench. I've got to finish this. These eight figures have got to be finished. But, I mean, I've got little stuff like, you know, cups and saucers. And I've, I've got this French coffee grinder, you know, 135th scale. And because I have the, the French figures. And I, I think it would be kind of cool to put in there. Um, being that it is mostly UK, Anzacs and British in the trench and occupying the stuff. Do they have a coffee grinder? I'm going to say one guy likes coffee. He's just an odd duck. And so I'm going to put a little coffee grinder in there. And I think it's just fun stuff. So yeah, uh, I'm really excited for that because... Sometimes I feel like when I'm at the end, and, and, and this has been a big discussion point here before, I drag my feet. I kind of drag my feet because I kind of get into it. I guess that's one good thing about a show, any show, not competition, not whatever, but it does say, get it done. And so I like that. I, I, I am actually enjoying that part of it. And so I'm going to use that for some type of, I'm looking over there because they're sitting over there. Um, I am going to use that as some information or, or some motivation to finish them up and do some of those final little things. That I'm just like, meh, you know, I didn't get to. So I got one month. Uh, obviously, I got to finish that first, doing that first. Um, and then it's all about prep for that show. And I think it'd be a lot of fun. So I'm really excited about it. And then after the show, I have the new diorama in mind already. I've talked about it a couple of times. And it's going to be a unique diorama for me, but I think you're going to really enjoy it because it's mostly going to be building. That's my joy is building. I like the figures and darn it. I think I'm getting pretty good at painting the figures. They're not perfect. Neil's way better. Well, lots of folks on here are way better. And, and those are my inspirations to get better with painting. But I also think it's fun to be able to build a diorama with no figures. And the reason is, it's it's going to be a diorama. Um, well, let's just gonna say it's it's going to be unique and really fun, and I think you're going to like it. And it's going to have like a medieval tavern. So I've always wanted to do a building. I love medieval stories. Uh, you know, science fiction, fantasy. Um, there's a book I've talked about before, Magician. I'm going to base the storyline on that for imagery i'm going to i'm going to base it kind of like on baldur's gate you know the video game the fun you know console pc video game um but yeah so that's going to be the next one and um after after here in a month and i'm super excited for that because no figures I, i'm just building the diorama and uh, multiple level blah 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 so i'm really really excited about that It'd be a lot of fun Okay, so here, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get to your comment, Neil, and my mouse is going wonky. It doesn't want to work. Oh, I have a weird mouse issue here. Anyway, I, I'm trying to click on it, and I can't. Uh, Neil says, uh, coffee grinder could have been left behind by the French or taken from a German trench guard. You're absolutely correct, and I love that. See, that's the kind of stuff that... Another diorama builder like Neil understands because you do want to have those stories behind every single object in there. It's not just enough to have it there. I really want a story behind it. Neil gets it. And, I, and I've seen that in his dioramas. And so very, very cool. You know, we did see some Neil stuff. We're going to see some more later on. And um, it's really inspiring because it shows you that I think how much that kind of thinking while you're doing it helps. So, um, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I had some stuff I wanted to talk about. I was writing it down 
Oh, I want to talk a little. Did I talk enough about um, Captain uh, Frank Culbertson? Um, I think I did. If you have any questions about him, please go look him up. I, I think that people like that. And, you know, you you might say high achiever. That's what I said earlier. Um, it's not that. They're just people that that are are super interested in something, right? And they commit so much of their time and effort to it that they become, you know, more than maybe somebody that doesn't do that. See, I was kind of a person that skipped around <laughs> a lot. It's fine. I love where I'm at. But when it's so targeted, so, you know, singular mindedness, um, and I'm sure he's got lots of other interests and there's lots of tangents through, you know, his history and stuff like that. But the point was, um, or the point I'm trying to get at is that I think it's really inspiring to, to, to read about that kind of stuff. And uh, I like reading about people that have achieved things. I have a lot of in the, in the office, I'll, I've got one, two shelves, I think committed to biographies, autobiographies. Um, I like that kind of thing. I like reading about people sometimes in their words or a biographer. I know they're a little bit fluff sometimes, you know, modern ones certainly, but like I've got one on Paul Revere. It's really, really cool about his, you know, silversmithing and stuff like that. It's a great book. And it was written, I think in the forties. So, um, yeah, that kind of stuff is pretty interesting to me. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Neil says now I can, now I can select it. Uh, here we go. Just put the two halves of my diorama together today and added two buckets of mud and have finally cleaned up ready for a chat on video at last when you're ready. That's awesome, Neil. Very, very cool. Now, if if anybody should have the chance or if you already have seen Neil's on uh, Neil's uh, postings and stuff on Facebook. Oh, my gosh. It's really cool because you'll start in and you'll see it progress pretty darn quickly. And so that's really cool, Neil. Uh, I'm excited. Um, What's this next week going to be? I think this next week could be pretty cool. So I'll try to contact you, Neil, and 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 we'll see if, if possibly next week. I don't know. I can't commit to that. But um, yeah, I, I I don't have anybody like in the wings. So that would be awesome. Thanks very much, Neil. Appreciate it. So anyway, folks, um, the other thing I did want to talk about is shorts. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. No, I want to talk about my video shorts. So this is just kind of a thing, and I hope you guys don't mind me talking about this. Um, so I I used during my build, right? I the build of World War One Trench, I did a short every day, like every day. And I know some of you have seen that because some of you are on here. Not everybody, because that's a different kind of video format and stuff like that. But like Scott, you know, would see him every day. Angela, that kind of stuff. Um, Link, I think, you see him stuff like that every day. Well, when I went into editing, what do I do? I don't know. I don't really, because when I'm editing, I mean, it's it's very labor intensive. You know, I mean, I, I come out here and do a little bit of painting at night, but literally I'm sitting in my office and I'm editing all day. And, um, so I don't know what to do on a short. And the reason I ask is a lot of folks came to the channel because of shorts. And I was doing them every day for eight months. So all those folks that signed up and like started watching and subbed and stuff, which I really appreciate because it's really nice and it helps get more people to see what I do, which I hope is interesting enough. You know, I'm getting something valuable out there. Um, I feel like I'm letting them down. So I don't know what I should be doing at this point. So far as shorts, I kind of want to do a short every day. It's not hard to do a short every day. Well, it sometimes can be a little frustrating because I'm like, ah, I got to get it done. But what do you want to see? I would love to do a short every single day, but I, you know, when I'm not building physically something like the World of Run Trench, you know, and, and I'll do, obviously, when I'm doing a build, it'll be a short every day. I mean, you know, whatever. But when I'm editing, I don't know what to do. So maybe it can be a short about something I've, I've built before. Maybe it's a short on editing. Maybe you're interested in that. Um, I do do shorts that are kind of saying, hey, the next video is going to be about this. 
and 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 that's what I showed early. Well, no, I didn't show one, but I'm gonna show one. Yeah, I did show one. Anyway, see, I'm scattered. But that is a a, a question that I would love to get some help with because I I I don't want those folks that came to my channel that really enjoy those daily show, shorts to kind of you know connect and just see what's going on. I don't want them to feel like, well, heck, Matt sucked. You know, he's not doing it no more. Uh, I will do it when I start my build, but that. And I'll do it while I'm doing my prep, sure, because there's something to show you. But when I'm editing, what do I show you? So I'd love to hear from you. Um, 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 um. Here somebody says, um, how about time-lapse video? Yeah, I like time-lapse videos, um, and, 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 and I've done them. But again, I'm not building. So I am – sorry, I had a screw in here when I was messing with it. It was in my, in my pocket. I'm like, what is that? Sorry get very easily distracted bird. So anyway, um, there's, I mean, I could, I could show you maybe a time-lapse video of me editing. Maybe. I don't know if, if I'm that interesting. Um, I don't know. I could, maybe I could do each day's, I don't, but that's a great suggestion. And, and, and thank you very much for, for, you know, giving me something, Neil, because yeah, I think it's something that I'd really like to, to, you know, I don't want those folks to that came here and want to see something, not see nothing. So, uh, John says, perhaps making a theme for each day might help, like Tool Tip Thursday, making Tip Monday from the Archive Tuesdays. Now, that is a pretty good idea, too. I love that. I love that idea. You know, I used I started doing shorts to just show stuff in the shop, you know, old stuff that I've built like what you're saying from the archives. I like that. That combined with, you know, some time lapse and stuff. Uh, that's a great idea. Thank you, John. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that. Because, yeah, I think I, I want to stay connected with folks. I want folks that enjoy uh, getting a little, hey, I'm doing this or I'm doing that or here's something interesting I've built before, whatever, because there's a bunch of that. Um, yeah. I'd like to do that. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it, John. Uh, oh, and John, I have a question for you. Uh, those piezoelectric uh, little cell things. I was looking at those this week, and I really want to talk about that because like Neil does, I want to see if those work with that glycol. It's glycol, glycerin, and water uh, that they use to make in the fog machines, you know? I want to see if it work on that specifically. I'm not sure. I mean, it says over, you know, uh, liquids I've seen it does the thing like you showed me. But I'm not sure if it does that particular liquid. I don't know. But that would be kind of cool because then I could build them into a diorama. How cool would that be? Um, John. Yep, we got that one. So Martin says, maybe try shorts on basis build techniques uh, like how to create level structures how to create good solid bonds do's and don'ts i like that that's great martin yeah and i you know the funny thing is is i do watch a lot of shorts if like i have a minute or something like that i do watch shorts it it, it might be on instagram it might be on youtube it might be on facebook i do actually watch shorts and so i'm thinking man I'm watching shorts. Can I make some of those? Thank you very much, Martin. I appreciate that. Uh, Jess mentions, uh, like your play strength, like play your strengths. Yeah, very, very good, Martin. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that, Martin. Thank you very much. Neil says, what about trying new products like demo or mixing two products? See what they can create in a, a handful of items from around the shop. See what you can achieve. Hey, that's kind of a neat idea too. Uh, like a little challenge. You know, that's really funny because I think as a woodworker or anybody that makes anything, you've got um, maybe some failed builds, right? <laughs> it's like, well, it was going and then, it, you know, it nosed in. Well, I've got like my, my hall of shame up here. These are a couple I will show. Um, this is funny. So this is a German um, guard shack. And I made this, and I'm sorry, it's, there you go. It's, it's, it's kind of dusty. 
Uh, and it's all made out of, you know, just balsa and a little bit of corrugated tin. So I made that. And then I realized, you know, the striped pattern that they put on these little guard shacks are meant to obscure the eye. They're meant to make it difficult to aim to kill the guard inside. There's, there, there's a lot of engineering in this little guard shack. Now, this is not painted. I, I, I hadn't painted yet because I realized my mistake. Well, one of the mistakes I made was I put a frame around the window. And what's that going to do? It's going to identify the window. Subsequent guard shacks that I saw had no framing on the external of the guard shack. You see my point? So that you couldn't identify about the head, you know, where the guard would be standing and where they look out. Because there are slits in the sides of the guard shacks to look out, but there's no frame on the outside. That frame would give a shadow. That frame would interrupt the camouflage uh, zigzag pattern that was painted on these. And so I couldn't use it. So there's a bunch of things like that. And they have a little story behind them, kind of like that. So that's a really cool um, idea. Uh, Neil. And, and, and that came from, you know, having old stuff and stuff like that. So thanks very much. I like that. Uh, Link, I find your work and ideas very interesting. I was wondering what did, uh, what did for work before starting doing this every day? That's a very good question. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I worked in the, my last job was in the computer industry. I, uh, I was in sales, basically more, more customer service, I would say. Um, and I worked at that software company for 23 years. And um, the software was in manufacturing. And I think that's the reason that I kind of, you know, did well at that job because it was all about manufacturing. Now, it was a software used in manufacturing. Um, and what the software did was it programmed laser, water jet, plasma, oxy fuel, punch machines, brakes, all that kind of stuff, steel processing and composite material processing machinery. So what the software I, I company I worked for, that software um, made all of that. I'm, I'm trying to not say their name. I just don't want to. But um, yeah, so that's what I did. Uh, so I was always around manufacturing. I was always in steel manufacturing plants. I would talk to people about parts, right? That's kind of one of the big things that I think for me helps me see when I'm scratch building. For 23 years, I would concentrate on a part, one part. And what I mean by that is this pencil, mechanical pencil, could have 35 to 50 parts in it, right? Individual parts, this part, that part, you know, you take it all apart and stuff like that. And then all of those go together to make subcomponents, components, and then final uh, things. Well, my job in, on a much bigger scale was parts, the individual part, how that part sat on a sheet of raw material goods, how you could cut it out of raw material, to get the best utilization out of that raw material so you weren't wasting raw material goods. So that's what I did. So for that many years, I'm looking all day at parts. So when I go and build or scratch build the things that I'm building for my dioramas, I don't see an interesting thing. I see a part. And I see a part with a function, just like Neil was talking about earlier. You know, you you have a story behind like the coffee grinder. He was saying, well, the coffee grinder could have been left there by the French or it could have been taken from a German soldier. Whatever the case may be, there's a story behind it. Well, when I'm building those parts and scratch building, yes, I'm picking up a part from, you know, or making my own part. But I'm building a part and that part does an actual functional thing. So I don't think that I put a bunch of stuff together on a scale built whatever widget. I don't think widget, and that looks interesting. I really trying to look at, okay, there's an input, there's an output. This functionally does that. I'm processing this over there. I'm moving a gas from here to a solid. You know what I'm saying? You, you, I'm, I'm trying to engineer my scale 
scratch building things because for over 20 years, I was in manufacturing and I looked at parts and I looked at parts, how they went in to a structure. I would look at subassemblies. I would look at CAD files, 3D, all that kind of stuff. So it is just impregnated in my brain parts. I looked at them for years on a computer screen. So that I believe helps me hopefully make a scratch build something that looks a little bit more real because I did see a lot of machinery and I did see that kind of thing. I was surrounded by it. Um, so, Hey, thank you very much, Link. That was really fun. And I hope I answered your question. I mean, I, you know, I was in the military and, and, and I worked for a, a coffee machine manufacturer, you know, being from Seattle, um, there's a lot of coffee around here. Um, for in the nineties, I actually worked for a coffee machine manufacturer and, and that was really fun. And I even think I shared with link, you know, in high school, I worked like six, seven years, uh, till I went in the army, um, in restaurants and it, which was really fun because, because link and I share, you know, some restaurant, uh, experience. He has much more than I did, but, but I, uh, I loved working in restaurants. That was, that was, you know, my childhood. I just absolutely loved my first jobs were in restaurants and, and absolutely loved it. Uh, there's, there's a mystique about that. So anyway, I, yeah. So thank you very much for that. It was a wonderful question, Link. I, I really appreciate it. I wonder if you could put yellow food dye in the fog mixture. Make See, that was the other thing, Neil. I did want to do a gas. I, it's that whole, you know, laying down, in uh, um, a splash mark, uh, artillery depression or something like that. I, I talked to John about that before. I may have mentioned it on the on the live stream too. I really think for a World War One trench, or not World War One trench, but it, just a World War One diorama, um, I really would like to do something like that. And 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 if I could get it to, we talked about chilling it and stuff like that, because because you know John being in the movie industry and understands the stuff like that, and of course you know Neil, you've done a lot of stuff in fog and, and and stuff in your environments. I really would like to have that lay low in that, and I'd almost like to you know have some way of moving it because you know when it's low like that, it'll kind of settle, but if a little bit of wind comes by, it'll undulate, and I think that. You know, to be able to put movement into the diorama in that way would be just fantastic. So yeah, I bet you could do yellow, and and I think it's worth really worth uh, looking into. And and I went down the the rabbit hole just the other day, looking at you know how to make your own solution because you can buy just gallons of the stuff. But I'm like, why not try to make it? So um, it's not hard. It's glycol alcohol, it's water, and I don't know the, the ratios or anything like that, but it's glycerin, water, and glycol alcohol. That's the basis for the fog machine stuff. It's the one I read. I don't 100% know. I haven't tried any of it, but I really do think that, that smoke, fog, gas would be phenomenal in a, um, in a diorama, World War I diorama. John says, I got a singular one now, too, of those mini humidifiers we can test on the group build. Nice. That'd be great. Um, because I'd like to see, like you were talking about, one of the things that, that John mentioned, because, you know, he's familiar with this stuff, was by chilling it, it'll kind of want to sink low, you know, to the ground. And so a delivery system that not only pumps it, but maybe pumps it through a little heat exchanger with ice or some type of coolant, um, you know, to get that smoke as it emerges, wherever it emerges. Cause that's the other thing. Where do you have this stuff emit? Where do you have it? Do you have it at the bottom of like a, a splash mark and just kind of fill it up? And if it's cooled, will it stay there or will it create like a little, you know, volcano? You don't want that. So anyway, I just, I love the idea of it. Um, also having it move across you know, like a wave, like a tidal wave moving across the terrain. Oh my gosh. That kind of stuff I think is just remarkable. And so, yeah, that's a lot of fun. And uh, that would be a lot of fun to, to, to test and try to make it actually work. Um, what are your goals for the shorts? How long is the finished product? How much time do you want to spend in production? I suspect the one to two minute might not be enough for some techniques. And, and that's the thing about these shorts, Mark. They are 60 seconds. They're one minute. And 
it it is a little bit more complicated like you're inferring there it it is you know strategizing how to get an interesting blip right because it's a blip it's one minute that's it and so you're trying to figure out in that one minute how i can gain someone's attention show them something interesting so that they're pleased to watch it and get them to come back because they want to watch it the next time. That's it. Yeah. Do that in one minute. And then, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the goal. That's the secret. Um, but I love the suggestions that I have here and I, and I think it's very doable. I can do it two ways. And, and the way I've been doing it is, uh, by just taking my phone and just live, just shooting, right? I've done others where I've taken existing video and stuff and edited. Either way works. The, the live is a little bit more live and, 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 and I think spontaneous and fun and whatever. But through editing, I can bring in other elements like showing a technique that was suggested before, showing a tool, giving a review, seeing how something responds, you know, archive, that kind of thing. So, and since I'm sitting and editing already, that's not a bad way to go, right? I mean, it works pretty good. So thank you very much. I, I, I like that, Mark. And, and, you know, I think that I'm okay at planning, but I'm not very analytical. And just like how you laid that out, Mark, very, do, 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 do. I love that. You know, you just figured it out, you know, and I like that. Um, and that's helpful. Thank you very much. Sentry box. Perfect. Sentry box would be very, very cool. Um, it's not really a guard box, but a sentry box. Thank you very much. Uh, turn into toilet. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, you know, because uh, I like the dimensions. I, I and, and I actually could shave that off but i figured eh, i'll just make another one because i was enjoying building it but um yeah it 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 you, you know it's funny when you go into it and then you finally figure out there was some serious engineering into this thing it wasn't just hey guys we need you know the sentry box and i just just you know do it but yeah i think that's cool and i don't think that they well maybe they had screens but uh these didn't have any um Windows on the side. Well, for like a, a toilet. Neil says you can get low lying fog generator. It is easier to get that to go higher with heat than to get in the normal fog, uh, hot foggers go low. I found when I was trying to smoke for my fire pit in my world. Okay. I see. Cause you were doing it around a fire pit and stuff like that. Okay. I, I kind of am into trying to figure out making it myself that I, you know, I, I just like that because I think, you know, as soon as I saw this little piezo electric deal, um, atomizer that, that, you know, online and, and well, John showed it to me first. I never seen it before until John Robeck showed me, but as soon as I saw that immediately, and then he mentions, you know, cool again, I'm like, okay, Underneath my diorama, immediately I'm like, okay, there's here's the deal, and then it goes through there. I just like the idea of that, you know. Um, that's fun to me. Buying it certainly, I I got it. It's forty bucks for a fog machine. Cake. It's it, that's something I can actually afford on my budget, right? No, I would like to build it, even if it's maybe even going to cost a little bit more. For me, it's the fun of building it. I am a builder, and I love figuring stuff out, even if it's not hard to figure out, I guess, you know, cause this isn't hard to figure out, but it's just that creative process is, is that's the joy that everything in the shop, everything in here is because it's fun to do and it's fun to do from scratch mostly. Um, you know, and, and, and sometimes you don't have the, the room to build that kind of stuff from scratch. So it does make perfect sense to buy, you know, and, and get this because you get the end result and blah, blah, blah. You can spend your time elsewhere. For me, I just want to build everything. I, virtually everything I see, I would be like, yeah, that would be kind of fun to build it. A car. I, I want to build a car. It'd be fun. So anyway, yeah, that's just my brain. Uh, I, I just love building stuff. So anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Um, 
if you are in the Seattle area, I think it would be really cool for you to go see that uh, show in April. It's really fun. Uh, and, and it is one of the bigger shows. Um, coming up, like I said, I'm going to finish Mirror, get that all done, get that back to the Museum of Flight. Then I'm going to dive into uh, prepping uh, World War One Trench and um, uh, Emma Carlos and Ichiro. And, and when I say prep, that'll mean they're on the bench. Um, I've got one light in Emma Carlos and Ichiro that's not blinking. Remember, John, the blue light? There's a blue light that is not blinking um, inside where Emma's at. And so I got to look at that. So there's going to be quite a bit to show. I will be doing shorts daily on that, but I still am going to have this problem that I would really like to solve. And certainly I think that there are shorts that would be fun to schedule, like John was saying, that that are like this day, that day, or something like that. Um, that regimented might be a little bit strict for me, but certainly I, I think those are wonderful ideas and, and to work those into that stream of, of getting these shorts out. So... Number one, you like it. It's there. You can comment on it. If you don't like it, you know, you can say, hey, do different, whatever. But thank you very much, everybody. That was a really, really cool response. That was a lot of feedback. Um, I typically don't get that. So thank you so much for that. So anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Uh, it's Easter here uh, coming up. And so Easter weekend is going to be wonderful. Uh, is this Good Friday? I believe this is Good Friday. I'm I'm stupid, so I don't know these things. Um, so wonderful thing is I don't know, man. Did I just make a big flub? Because I don't know. I never paid attention to that stuff. Uh, <laughs> look at that. I you see, there's a there's a part of my subconscious that uh, said it is Good Friday, so you can say that. So thank you a bunch, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, I am going to be spending some time on the bench Sunday. I'm going to be doing a lot of cooking because we got some family coming over. But tomorrow is all going to be bench time. If I do hear from the uh, Museum of Flight, I'll be able to get that thing out of the way, and it's going to be right on to my models. I'm really excited about it. Uh, John, I'm really looking forward to this evening. I think it'd be a really fun day uh, to, to work on some stuff. And that piezoelectric atomizer thing, really want to talk about that because I think it'd be fun. I don't know about this diorama because it, 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 it's, it's not been designed around that idea, right? It just, you know, but for a future one. I think that would be just so cool. So thank you everybody so much for putting up with whatever the heck is going on here. Um, I love it when you like and subscribe. We will replay this. I look at every single one of my comments. Um, oh, this is weird. When you comment and then I comment back and then you should comment again, so that doesn't automatically come up in YouTube, you know, when you're doing that kind of stuff. So I don't always see it. So if I comment back to you and then you comment back to me, I'm sorry if I don't get it right away. I do check it every once in a while, uh, but I need to be a little bit better at checking that because I love and value your comments because it's fun. I I have just great conversations with, with lots and lots of folks that are on here today. Scott, you know you. John, you know you. Uh, link as well. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, I really, really had a great time today and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.